All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we have a Houston Rock recap video. Unfortunately, they did not get the job done tonight. They lost to the New York Knicks on the road 106 to 99, which puts their losing streak at 14 straight games. And it's 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 not pretty. It is it is definitely not pretty. You've got a lot of turnovers, you've got way too many missed free throws, you have just missed wide open shots there's there's some dysfunctionality going on right now but before we get into this video guys if you enjoy it be sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button i post rockets content every single day on my houston rocket daily channel so be sure to check that out as that's where like you know all the like sub topics of main topics for rockets content is so check that out we're trying to get to a thousand subs by the end of the year also feel free to follow my twitter i'm usually live tweeting rocket games and other tweets so tonight obviously it didn't end the way and i i've got it right here um they got outscored 26 to 34 in the fourth quarter so actually heading into the fourth quarter the rockets had the lead the rockets were playing very very aggressive because the New York Knicks they're a very physical team so I think tonight what the Houston Rockets demonstrated is they kind of showed themselves they gave themselves a boast of confidence where it's like we can be physical with these physical teams we can even out physical whatever the hell a better word would be for that like we can bully we can almost like play bully ball when we want to like just because we're young doesn't mean we're big, doesn't mean we're not good, doesn't mean we're not strong. And you saw it with Jay Sean Tate in the third quarter. Jay Sean Tate goes right at Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson hit the deck, had like a double bloody nose. He didn't come back the rest of the game. And that kind of helped set the tone for the Rocker, helped like reinforce the tone because they held the Knicks to what it was it, 11, 13 points in the first quarter that, hey, you can, we're not a guaranteed win. Maybe we are one in fifteen. Maybe we've we have lost fourteen straight games. But at the end of the day, we are going to try our hardest. We're going to try our best every single night, and we're going to make sure that this is not an easy win. And tonight, this was definitely not an easy win for the New York Knicks. Obviously, they got off to a twenty-one to thirteen drought after the first quarter. But with some good defense and some good offense in the second quarter, they quickly, quickly got it back to a tie heading into halftime. But to be honest with you, like I'm looking at Rockets Twitter and it, everyone's like freaking out. I, I genuinely do not understand the panic. I like literally don't understand how every Rocket fan or most Rocket fans are completely going berserk right now. They're like, oh, fire Silas. Blah, blah, blah. We should have drafted Mobley. Like, it, it's something different every single time. And it's like, I don't think a lot of people are watching these basketball games because... And let me just back it up. I'll actually just back it up with stats. A lot of these issues are not related to Steven Silas. Is... Let's see. Is 59% free throw shooting Steven Silas's fault? I don't really think so. Is 25% from downtown Silas's fault? I don't really think so. You have 22 turnovers. Now you could get, like, you could make an argument. I'm not here to say you couldn't make an argument that those specific faults are Silas. Like, oh, he should be practicing, having, their, having us practice free throws more. You know, he runs too complex of an offense for these young players. I've seen that a couple times and it's like, oh my goodness. The Rockets are so young. It's okay. This is what was gonna, this is what was expected this year anyways. I don't understand the panic. Yes, it's not fun losing 14 straight games, but I guarantee you, the Rockets will turn the hump at some point in the season. They're not going to go 1-81. They're not going to go 6-76. They're going to win at least 15 basketball games this season. They've had a very difficult schedule. Granted, it is the West, but they've had a very difficult schedule in the first 15 games. And I look at a team like the Brooklyn Nets, they haven't had a very difficult schedule. I think that actually plays a decent role into it. Now, obviously, you can't be getting blown out by teams like the Oklahoma City Thunder, 
But I, I think you are starting to see after 10 or so games, I think it did take about 10 or so games, where every single night we're seeing improvement in some category for the Rockets. Tonight, let's, let's dive into some stats because it, KPJ was out again. Uh, Daniel House Jr. was out of the starting lineup, which I think was really good. But these Rockets are learning. Jalen Green needs to be more aggressive in the second half. They're, the Rockets, you know, Silas is going to break this down. The team will break it down. Jalen will break it down. And they'll see, all right, Jalen, you only took a handful of shots. You shot 7 of 11 from the field, 2 of 5 from downtown. You were on tonight. If you are shooting 7 of 11, whatever mathematical that puts at, like 76, 77%, whatever it is, if, if you're shooting 77% or higher, shoot the ball more. Shoot the ball more. I mean, the Rockets finished with 99 points tonight. Four more makes it a one-possession game from Jalen Green. So I think 16 points on a night where Kevin's out is, I, I don't think that's really excusable. Free throw shooting remains just a huge issue on this team, and it's with everybody. I mean, Jalen Green, 0 of 1 from the free throw line. Eric Gordon, 3 of 6. Christian Wood, 5 of 7. Uh, KJ, 0 for 1. Shangun, 1 of 2. DJ, 4 of 5. Like, it's literally just the whole team. I mean, there isn't anybody specifically, you know, there's, there's guys who aren't shooting the free throws at an efficient rate as opposed to what they used to be able to do, like Christian Wood. But hopefully those start to level off, and I, I do believe they'll start to level off. A, a positive, this is something that might go overlooked. A really big positive tonight for the Rockets was there was no Daniel House Jr. Or I apologize. We saw Daniel House Jr. for about two minutes tonight. He had like a minus, actually we have it here, minus five um, in the two minutes he was out on the court, it's, he's, he, he's not the op. He's not, he's not it at all. Now, there was no David Nwaba, which I thought was very interesting because David Nwaba definitely sh is good enough to be playing basketball every single night. But at the same time, I, I mean, KJ, 5 of 6, plus 10 in the plus minus. He had two steals and a block along with 10 points, three rebounds, and an assist. So... If David Nwaba loses minutes at K.J. Martin's regard, I think that's okay. Like, that's not ideal to me. I think hopefully that gets figured out and tweaked out. Hopefully Silas plays around with the minutes here. But I'm okay with that. And another thing I want to mention is Garrison Matthews. Let's see. 15 minutes, 3 of 8 from the field, 2 of 7 from downtown, 5 rebounds, um, 8 points. He was actually plus 5 from a plus minus. So he actually had a pretty decent... Um, statistical night 15 minutes 8 5 and plus 5 plus minus I, I think that's very capable uh, but here's the thing Garrison Matthews I think a lot of people have not been watching these games because I'll, I'll hear it on YouTube videos I'll see it on Twitter I'll see it in my comment section Garrison Matthews is doing a lot for the Rock because I know it may not seem like it at certain points because two of seven from downtown the re the main reason the Rockets got Garrison was because of his three-point shooting, and he is ice cold this season, ice cold. It's okay, though, because he is doing everything else. He's drawing charges, so he's getting offensive fouls drawn on him. He's getting in passing lanes. He's having alley or uh, put-back dunks, helping with spacing significantly. Like, Garrison Matthews is playing his heart out. He's putting all of his energy out on the court for however much he plays every single night and he is genuinely making an impact on the Rockets bench so if I see any Garrison Matthews slander I immediately know that person is not watching these Rocket games because yes he's shooting horribly but he is playing totally fine the defensive impact he has been able to have in just a couple of games for the Rockets the spark he is igniting for this Rockets bench it's not going overlooked I'm noticing it so I love to see it uh, Eric Gordon, trade him. I, I'm so sick of saying this. How is it still a thing? Uh, how is Eric Gordon on the team? Christian Wood, 6 of 11, uh, 18 points, 12 rebounds. I, this was a good game from Christian Wood, but at the same time, it really wasn't. Um, you know, He'd get bullied down in the paint from Randall a couple of times. Mitchell Robinson, when he was in the game, Nerlens Noel was bullying him a little bit. Uh, Christian Wood... I don't know if the heavy pick and roll offense is helping or hurting him 
Uh, Christian Wood's kind of just still one of those, let's wait and see, but he's definitely not improving, or he definitely has not really improved much um, last year to this year. It just hasn't really been that noticeable. Shangoon finally, 24 minutes tonight, 4 of 8 from the field, 1 of 2 from downtown, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, 10 points, plus 7, plus minus. It's so evident when Shangoon plays how good he is. Like He probably has the best basketball IQ of any 19-year-old out there right now and so that's very good news for the rockets to have so that's it for today guys be sure to hit that rockets uh check out that rockets daily channel be sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button. i appreciate all you guys watching today's video hopefully the rockets can get a win on the board relatively soon but i will see you guys later peace